Hey, welcome back to Bear Squid. In this video, I'm going to show you how to find the equation of a quadratic sequence using the quadratic formula. Imagine we had a quadratic sequence with the first four terms as 2, 6, 12 and 20. Now, if we were to find out the 50th term, we could find the pattern between each term and then continue the sequence until we get to the 50th term. Or instead, we can find the general formula for this particular sequence. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to generate the formula for any given quadratic sequence coming up. Before we get started, let's define a quadratic equation. A quadratic equation is an equation of the second degree, meaning it contains at least one term that is squared. The standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero, with a, b and c being constants, and x is the unknown variable. So we're going to be using this format, ax squared plus bx plus c, to solve um, our quadratic sequence. So consider the following sequence generated by the formula un equals n squared plus n. So we know that this sequence is going to be quadratic because in this formula we have a variable, in this case n, which is squared. So let's substitute our values of n into this equation to find out what the first couple of terms are. So it's very simple, uh, don't get alarmed, all we need to do is substitute n equals 1. So for the first term, n equals 1, so 1 squared plus 1, that's going to give us a value of 2. So for the second term, we're going to substitute n equals 2 to find out what the second term is. So in this case, if we do 2 squared plus 2, or well, 2 squared is 4, 4 plus 2 is 6, that's the second term. For the third term, we're going to do 3 squared plus 3, which is 12. For the fourth term, 4 squared plus 4 is 20, and so on and so forth. So the first six terms of the sequence are 2, 6, 12, 20, 30, and 42. Now we already know what the formula is for this sequence because they've given it to us and we know it's quadratic. What we're going to do is a bit of reverse engineering to figure out how this works, okay? So we're going to look for the first difference between consecutive terms. Now consecutive means one after the other. So we're going to find the difference between 2 and 6, which in this case is 4. Between 6 and 12 is 6. Between 12 and uh, 20 is 8, between 20 and 30 is 10, and between 30 and 42 is 12. So there are differences. Now, we don't notice anything special about that between 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on to the second difference. Now, when we're looking at the second difference, we're going to look at the second difference between consecutive terms. So again, between 4 and 6, which is 2, between 6 and 8, Again, it's 2, between 8 and 10, which is 2, and the between 10 and 12. Again, we have 2. Now, we notice that the second difference is constant. So, whenever the second differences are constant, a sequence can be described by a quadratic formula of the form, and we've mentioned this already, a n squared plus b n plus c, where a, b, and c are constants. So, they're just the coefficients of the variable. Okay, so let's look at a worked example where we can examine the differences and find the formula for this sequence for ourselves. So the question is, find the formula that describes the sequence 1, 8, 21, 40, 65, and 96. So we're going to first examine the differences. So we're going to start off by looking at the first difference. Now the first difference between 1 and 8 is obviously 7, between 8 and 21 is 13, between 21 and 40 is 19, between 40 and 65 is 25, and between the last two numbers is 31. So no surprise, there's nothing special about these numbers. We're going to look for the second difference. So the difference between 7 and 13 is 6, between 13 and 19 is 6, and between 19 and 25 is 6, and 25 and 31 is also 6. So we see that we have a constant difference in our second differences. As the second differences are constant, the sequence can be described by a quadratic formula of the form un equals a n squared plus b n plus c. Now don't get alarmed about this un, that's just looking for the nth term. So I could, I mean it doesn't really matter what I put here, this could just say the nth term is going to be a n squared plus b n plus c. So we're looking for the values of a, b and c. So we need to find out what a, b and c are. Okay, so to find the values of a, b, and c, we're going to consider the first three terms of the sequence. So if I look back at the sequence, 1, 8, 21, 40, 65, and 96, this is called the first term, which basically means n is equal to 1. The 8 is the second term, so n is equal to 2. 21 is the third term, n equals 3. 40 is the fourth term, so n equals 4. 65 is the fifth term, so n equals 5, and so on, okay? 
So for the first term, we're going to substitute n equals 1. So wherever you see this n, we're going to substitute 1 because we're trying to find out what the first term is. So what we're going to do is we're going to find out using the first term. Now, when n equals 1, if we substitute into this formula, 1 squared is 1, so that gives us 1a. And then 1 times b is b. And then we have c on its own. So 1 is equal to a plus b plus c. We're going to call that equation 1. Now this is, it might be a bit confusing, but it'll make sense as I'll show you uh, the next couple of equations. So we know the second term here is 8. But to get the second term, we need to substitute n is equal to 2. So let's substitute 2 into the equation. So 2 squared is 4, so you get 4a. Uh, 2 times b is 2b, so you get 2b, and you still get the c. So 8 is equal to 4a plus 2b plus c. That's equation 2. We'll call that equation 2. For the third term, we're going to be substituting uh, n is equal to 3. We already know that the term is 21. So 21 is equal to, and now let's substitute 3 into here. So 3 squared is 9, so that's 9a. And then 3 times b, which is 3b, and then you get your c. So 21 is equal to 9a plus 3b plus c. We'll call that equation 3. Now, we've got equation 1, equation 2, and equation 3. So we have these three simultaneous equations, and to solve them, we're going to subtract equation 1 from equation 2 to give equation 4, and we're also going to subtract equation 1 from equation 3 to give equation 5. So equation 2 is 8 is equal to 4a plus 2b plus c. We're going to subtract that from equation 1, which is 1 is equal to a plus b plus c. So we have 8 minus 1, which is 7. 4a minus a is 3a. 2b minus b is b, and then c's cancel out. That is equation 4. Now let's subtract equation 3 from equation 1. So we have 21 is equal to 9a plus 3b plus c. That's equation 3. We're going to minus it from equation 1, which is going to give us 20 is equal to 8a plus 2b, and the c's cancel out. That's equation 5. Now what we're going to do then is we're going to subtract equation 4 times 2 uh, with equation 5. So equation 5, that's 20 minus 8a plus 2b. We're going to minus that from 2 times equation 4. So here's equation 4. And 2 times 7 is 14. 2 times 3a is 6a. And 2 times b is 2b. Now when we minus those, you can see that the b's are going to cancel out. We're going to eliminate the b's. We get 20 minus 14 is 6. 8a minus 6a is 2a. And then if we solve that, we get a is therefore equal to 3. So if you are struggling at this point in time, I would, one, subscribe and turn on notifications, wait until I upload the alternative approach. Uh, and number two, more importantly, is learn how to solve uh, simultaneous equations using either the substitution or the elimination process, okay? And I'll link those videos uh, in the description below so you can go and check that out. So let's carry on. We have a is equal to 3. So we're going to substitute the fact that a is equal to 3, and we're going to substitute into equation 4. So equation 4, just to remind you, was 7 equals to 3a plus b. That's equation 4. And we're going to substitute when a is equal to 3. So 7 is equal to 3 times 3 plus b. So 3 times 3 is obviously 9. Uh, and so we have 7 is equal to 9 plus b. If we rearrange that, we get b is equal to minus 2. So now we have a is equal to 3, b is equal to minus 2. So we can finally substitute a is equal to 3, b is equal to minus 2 into equation 1. Now just to remind you, equation 1 was 1 is equal to a plus b plus c. That's equation 1. And if I substitute my values of a is equal to 3, b is equal to minus 2, I end up getting um, 1 is equal to 1 plus c, which therefore means that c is equal to 0. So now that I've worked out all my constants for my quadratic formula, that a is equal to 3, b is equal to minus 2, and c is equal to 0, I therefore know that the sequence 1, 8, 21, 40, 65, and 96 will be generated by the quadratic formula a n squared plus b n plus c, where a, b, and c are 3, minus 2, and 0 respectively. So therefore, if I substitute these values into my formula, I will get that u n is equal to 3 n squared minus 2 n. Of course, it would be silly for us uh, to leave it there. What I want to do is I want to check that this formula works for this particular quadratic sequence. So let's substitute some of the values in the sequence. So of course, you should check the first few terms. So for the first term, when n equals 1, 
we've got 3 times 1 minus 2 times 1, which obviously equals to 1 in this case, which is fantastic. Excellent. Let's work out the second term. So when n equals 2, so we have 3 times 2 squared minus 2 times 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 minus 4 is 8. So that works out. So just for argument's sake, let's check out the third term. So we're going to substitute n is equal to 3. So when 3 is squared, that's 9. 9 times 3 is 27. And then uh, 2 times 3 is 6. 27 minus 6 obviously gives us 21. And that's perfect. We checked out. So that's how to work out the formula for a quadratic sequence. If you're interested in an alternative approach without using simultaneous equations, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications because I will be uploading a video of a different method uh, that I think is a bit easier without using simultaneous equations. As always, I'll see you in the next one.